All right. Good afternoon, everybody. This is the Tuesday, October 15th meeting of the Transportation and Parking Commission. My name is Donna Lascalia. I'm the Director of Public Works, also the Chair of the Commission. I want to announce that this meeting is being audio and video recorded. And Beth, uh, when you are ready, if you could please call the roll. DPW Director Donna Lascalia. Here. Police Department Chief John Cartledge. Here. Planning and Sustainability Department uh, Head Carolyn Mish. Carolyn, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Thanks. Sorry about that. Nancy Forrestal, Parking and Administration Enforcement. Here. Councillor Alex Jarrett. Here. Councillor Deb Clemmer. Here. TPC member Devin Bruce. Here. TPC member Diana Day Foskett. Here. And TPC member Jamie Albro Fisher. Here. Everybody's here. That's nine people. Okay. Thank you, Beth. Um, next up is public comment. Uh, this is the public's opportunity to speak to the commission on any topic. I do ask that if you are here for a particular agenda item, you hold your comments until we get to that agenda item. Makes for a more orderly meeting. But if you are here to speak about something that is not on the agenda, you are welcome to do so now. I'll just need your name, city of town or residence, and ask that you limit your comments to three minutes. Um, so if there's anyone here for public comment, please raise your ritual or actual hand and we will recognize you. Okay, don't see anybody for public comment. So next up will be approval of the minutes from the prior meeting, which was September 17th, 2024. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please? So move, Devin. I'll, I'll second, but not for a positive recommendation for approval. Oh, I'm sorry for approval. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, Beth, please call the roll. Donna? Yes. John? I'm going to abstain. I was not at the last meeting. Carolyn? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Alex? Yes. Deb Clemmer? Yes. Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. And Jamie? Yes. Eight yeses, one abstention. Okay, thank you, Beth. Next is reports from departments and subcommittees. I have um, a handful of updates from DPW. So the Mill and Overlay Paving Project is in progress. The following areas have been paved. The Roundabout by Look Park, Spring Street, Loudville Road, North Loudville Road, North Elm Street, North Maple Street, Chestnut Street, Burt's Pit Road, and Dana Street. Um, we have some uh, minor work remaining, including driveway paving, speed hump and table installation, pavement markings, and installation of traffic signs. Um, we are awaiting the delivery of uh, RRFBs, the uh, flashing pedestrian signals, um, in the corridors around Smith College. That's five locations. Um, the parts for these RRFBs are on back order and have been back ordered for several weeks. Um, so there's actually um, construction barrels and cones on the bases. Um, as soon as these things, um, a, our contractor receives them, um, they will be installed, but there is a delay actually coming from the manufacturer um, and it's um, a, a very lengthy one, so that's uh, unfortunate. Um, pavement markings, work is complete um, throughout the city. Um, everything has been restriped, crosswalks, double set yellow center lines and fog lines, so that work is complete um, for the season. And just a couple of updates on mass DOT projects. Um, Damon Road reconstruction is coming down the home stretch. Um, and uh, we actually have a uh, final walkthrough um, that's going to be scheduled in a couple of weeks um, to go over punch list items and um, work continues on the I-91 bridges. I'm also going to add that um, folks may have noticed the paint 
peeling off of the mast arms of the traffic signals on King Street. Um, that's actually a manufacturer's defect and um, it, it is going to be corrected. The poles are gonna be sandblasted and repainted in place. The work was supposed to happen this fall. I just received word today um, that the work is not gonna happen till the spring because of disruptions due to the hurricanes. Um, so those are DPW updates. Um, does anybody else have any updates for the commission? Devin, go ahead. Um, I've just got a question. Eversource is digging up my neighborhood drastically. And I wonder, did they let you know a schedule ahead of time for what streets they're going to tear up? Um, they do. They actually get permits from my office um, and, and then they communicate out what their schedule is going to be. They, they really are, are doing um, kind of a final push before the snow flies. So they're yeah. more active than they typically are in the city. Did they give you enough lead time that you can factor that into some of your paving projects? I, yeah, that's the idea. They're trying to stay ahead of our utility projects. They're trying to stay ahead of our paving projects. So we have a lot of coordination that we do with them um, to make sure that they know what roads we're going to be in so they can um, do their work before our paving. Thank you for entertaining my curiosity. Any other updates for the commission? Um, so we have five agenda items today. Um, we do have the chair and co-chair of the Disability Commission with us today, Amy and Emma. Um, so I would like to take item D out of order, just out of respect for, um, for their time and the update that they have to share for us. Um, so if no one on the commission has um, any objections, I would like to have a brief update on sidewalk discussions with the Disability Commission. And um, I can just kind of set a little context here um, and, and then turn it over to Amy Sugihara, who's the chair of the commission and the Cornwall's uh, vice chair. Um, and they are both with us today. Um, so I have been um, working with the Disability Commission, actually attended their most recent meeting um, to talk about sidewalk priorities throughout the city and to hear feedback kind of on what their priorities might be and places that we can focus our resources. Um, so that was the topic of conversation uh, at the last Disability Commission meeting. We also talked a little bit about the Complete Streets Ordinance um, and we expect to have further conversation around the limitations, um, kind of challenges that we face in complying with that ordinance. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Amy, who is the chair of the commission to just talk a little bit about last week's meeting. Amy, go ahead and welcome. Thank you so much for letting us be here. Um, and thanks for that introduction, Director Lucelia. Um, Emma and I are happy to be here on behalf of the Disability P P uh, Commission and we're really excited to be a part of the conversation about sidewalks. Um, and we're super grateful to you all, to the commission and to Director Lascalia and DPW for working together um, and really for understanding the importance of navigable sidewalks in Northampton. Um, and hopefully, you know, all of us working together, it's going to make a, a more accessible city um, quicker, ultimately. Um, that's the hope and, and to have it uh, happen more smoothly. Um, so three things that we've been talking about recently in the Disability Commission to share with you all. Um, you might not be surprised that sidewalks uh, as a topic come up pretty regularly um, in the commission. Um, but so recently, uh, one of the topics was uh, sharing the list as uh, Director Lascalia referenced, um, sharing a list that commissioners generated from our own experiences and from people we know, um, sidewalks that are in need of repair or replacement. And that was in our September meeting. And so we shared that list with DPW, um, some of the sidewalks on that list are going to be covered in the Main Street redesign. Some of them are slated to hopefully be done in about two years, a, a much bigger project, kind of several sidewalks in an area kind of near the downtown. And some of the sidewalks um, 
DPW has added to kind of their their master list of things that that need to happen sooner. Um, so that that's been fantastic. And then also Director Lascalia uh, referenced the complete street ordinance. So that came up briefly at our last meeting um, last just last week, and it will be uh, thoroughly discussed at our next um, Disability Commission meeting um, next month. And hopefully Director Lascalia will be there to kind of frame out the conversation. Um, and so, We'll, we'll have a, a thorough discussion on the pros and cons of it and see if the commission has a recommendation that goes to city council regarding the complete street ordinance. Um, and then the third topic that's uh, been you know, front and center in many meetings around the city recently is the um, 823,000 uh, that might be reprogrammed from the hotel bridge funds. And um, so the, the Disability Commission is um, looking at that list and um, will be kind of adding to it or giving input to D DPW um, as, as needed. So that list is based on um, accident reports and the 2018 Alta Sidewalk Inventory. Um, so it's a five page, very extensive, thorough list that that we're looking through um incredibly exciting for uh, the prospect of having um, more sidewalks addressed um, more quickly next year um, unfortunately the you know the hotel bridge situation is pending um, but we are certainly grateful uh, for attention to sidewalks emma do you have anything you want to add to that I don't think so. I think you really covered everything, Amy, as as always. <laughs> okay, well, thank you both for, for that summary. And, and again, part of the uh, conversation that we had at the Disability Commission was um, a, a list of, of priorities for the $823,000 uh, that may be reprogrammed from uh, the hotel bridge. So we're looking specifically at a section of Elm Street from Cooley Dickinson to the high school um, with um, kind of heaved and broken up uh, sidewalk panels. We are looking at both sides of Bedford Terrace um, where there was actually a, a pretty terrible incident that happened um, a, that we caught out of the accident reports that are submitted to us. Um, and then there are spot repairs in a variety of places, um, Village Hill and neighborhoods off of South Street. Um, and there is also, of course, the reconstruction uh, on Florence Street, as Mayor Shiara announced um, at Council. So that was, again, part of the conversation that we had at the Disability Commission, um, which, will, uh, which we intend to continue next month. Um, so just wanted to make sure that this commission got an update um, directly from the chair and vice chair. Happy to entertain any uh, comments or questions if there are any on this. But certainly appreciate um, the invitation and hospitality of the Disability Commission and uh, welcoming me uh, to their meeting and certainly look forward to our regular attendance uh, kind of in both directions moving forward. Um, so anyone have any comments for Amy or Emma? Okay, hearing none, Amy and Emma, thank you very much for your time this afternoon and we will see you at your next meeting. Thank you so much for having us. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Emma. Okay, next up is a discussion of parking issues on Washington Avenue and Washington Place. Um, so this is um, on the agenda at the request um, or after conversation with Councilor Clemmer, there are some um, uh, parking issues on both streets. 
um, and it is primarily due to Smith College um, being uh, back at school and kind of an influx of cars into the neighborhood. Um, so I thought it was a good opportunity to uh, hear from folks in the neighborhood about the challenges that they're having in parking and also want to ask Councillor Clemmer if she has um, just kind of any comments to frame the conversation a little bit more eloquently than I just did. Um, you framed it very eloquently. So um, to add to that, though, I just want to thank you and uh, Director Forrestal and uh, Ms. Smith parking people and the residents for uh, working together on this. And, um, you know, it, it is a problem. We we are thinking it might be worse this year because of the geothermal project and hoping it eases up um, in about a year and a half when that ends. I know it's a long time. Um, I um, spoke to some of the residents and um, there were a few recommendations such as a resident sticker um, for their neighborhood for restrictions during certain times. No parking um, at certain times, um, one or two, whatever nights a week. Um, seasonal parking stickers are just um, doing nothing and continuing to work with the parking department, um, which they've been doing a great job of ticketing and um, warning people um, about um, if they're parked there too long. And also Smith College has sent out a few emails to the students telling them about um, where where they can park. You know, they have to be three feet from driveways, which I think a lot of people didn't realize. Um, and um, so, um, I, you know, I think I'm hoping it gets a little bit better and um and uh but I'd like to hear from the people on the streets too to see how they feel about it because um you know these restrictions also affect people that live there. It's not only the students and um I, I think most people realize they're public streets too, and we can't say certain people can't park there. It's it's open to anybody. Um so if I don't know if there's anybody here from Washington, but um, yeah, I'd like to hear their thoughts on it too. Oh, thank you, Councillor. So happy to take public comment from anyone in the neighborhood who who has any comments for us. So I just need your name and city or town of residence. So I see a hand up that says tablet. So let's start there. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, go ahead. I cannot, okay. Hi, uh, my name is Mark Griska. I've been in Washington Ave for, for over 30 years. Um, and I'm a resident of Northampton for uh, over 40 years. Um, one of the things I think is that when the city responded to the Smith College students parking on Dryads Green. Mark, I think we lost you. We're gonna unmute you and try again. Bad internet connection here. So okay, we got you back now. Go ahead. You you were you were talking about Dryads Green. Hi. So Dryads Green, um, Harrison, Kensington, Smith students were parking there. Um, the the residents of Dryads Green and Harrison Ave were mostly affected by that. So the city instituted this uh, alternate side parking, um, which included part of Washington Ave. So I, I live at the opposite Dryads Green. So from Dryads Green up to Elms. Mark, we lost you again. I know I'm having trouble here. 
Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you, but it's um, it's not a great connection. Okay. That's not it. No, I've got a terrible connection. Yeah, you might want to you might want to consider calling in by phone, and um, we can we can try again. Okay, where's the number located? Um, Cindy, if you could uh, put that in the chat. I'll see if I can figure it out. It, yeah, if you could put that in the chat for him, it'd be on the agenda. And and it might just um, give you a better chance to comment to us. Okay, I'll try calling in just a minute okay. here. Yeah, and, and we'll, um, we'll recognize you um, at, at that time. All right, let's, um, let's move on. It looks okay. like... Uh, it it looks like uh Anne. Um let me unmute you and great. Hi, uh Anne McEwen, David Thompson. We're Washington Avenue uh residents up more closer to the um the Elm Street end of the street. So we've been on the street for 25 years and I've been had a business in Northampton, gosh, since the 80s. And um, so uh, we when we first moved here it was alternate side of the, the street parking that changed at a really awkward time at night. A lot of residents, I think, were 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 towed at times as well. We make a long story short, did petition with uh, Paul Spector was our counselor at the time, and we were able to call all as a street come to an agreement, at least the people from our end up, I know Mark's right on the line, um, it, to just move to one side of the street parking, which has actually worked out really well for 25, most, almost 25 years. Um, so I we're kind of hoping that um, we can all weather this and not make any major changes. Uh, that, you know, once Smith gets the work done, hopefully, the students will be parking closer to the school and not and not coming up our way. Do you want to add anything? Well, over the last week, we've seen the parking uh, parking crew coming here pretty frequently. I've seen them ticketing cars. They actually towed a car at one point. I think they're keeping an eye on the people that are parking here for long periods of time. I think it's really reasonable for students to park here. I mean, you've got to park somewhere. And there's really not parking on campus at this point on Smith. I think, you know, I don't think they planned really well for the parking for the kids. Uh, so I don't think we're saying no parking on the street. It's just the cars that end up parked here for a week at a time. Um, and I think the parking crew is doing a good job of monitoring that at this point. I think the fact that it's been brought up, they're doing a good job of that. So I agree with Annie that probably nothing drastic needs to be done um, at this point. Okay, yeah, thank I, you for your comments. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else from Washington have any comments for us? David, you're next. Hey everyone, uh, thanks. I will not say how long I've lived in Northampton. I don't think it has any bearing on the kind of voice you have in the town. So um, I'm going to say uh, I agree with what uh, my neighbors just said. I think it's totally overkill to do any of this stuff. All the things I've heard from people who lived under the regime of no parking, et cetera. It sounds like a total nuisance and annoying to have guests, et cetera. I think the dryads green alternate side thing is totally bonkers. Um, I would also say I'm appalled at how quickly you responded to this parking issue in relationship to how little attention gets paid to like Madeline of Life and Death, like my kids cross Elm Street every morning to a bus stop that like nobody stops at stops walks. Like I wish you guys had that level of responsiveness to those kinds of real issues. And uh, you know, Smith College students can park uh, you know, wherever. I think that's fine. It's a nuisance that's temporary. So um I would really hate to see anything done change the uh the status quo okay thank you for your comment okay any other comments um from the folks on washington place for us on this 
I did see that a phone number or a person calling in by phone joined. Yes, and I wonder if that is Mark. Um, let me see if I can unmute this phone number. Counselor, does he have to push something on the cell phone to um, to unmute himself? I believe it's star nine. Okay. Yeah, let me let me I have see. hit the button to unmute a few times. Okay, so for Mark, for you calling in, yep, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, I don't want to sit in front of the uh, tablet because I'm getting an echo. Um, so I, I thought what what everybody has said is I I agree with. You know, I don't think that we need to um, change the parking regulations. This has been, um, as David said, it, it's it's kind of a fiasco in some ways, um, and I don't want to punish the Smith students. They have to park somewhere, um, but they it's frustrating when you see a car sit there for days on end. And I realize that um, parking enforcement is acutely aware of that. They're doing a good job, um, but bear in mind that this is really a seasonal thing. So when Thanksgiving break comes, the students disappear. When Christmas break comes, they disappear again. And then in May, they disappear again for the summer. So it's, it's really sort of a temporary thing. And I think that one of the things the city should do is, is really press upon Smith that they need to provide a convenient option for the students to park. They're spending tens of millions of dollars on new buildings, on the geothermal energy project, um, yet they haven't done anything sub substantive in the way of parking infrastructure for the students. Um, I don't, you know, I think that if you add more regulations, you're just going to push the cars somewhere else further from campus. Um, enforcing the parking in the snow emergency. Uh, when I first moved to the city, December 1st, the police would ticket every single car on the street, whether there was snow or not. I don't agree with that. I don't think that should be the case. But when there is a snow emergency, the car should either be ticketed or they should be told what seems to happen is they get plowed around. So that's my comment. And thank you for the comment. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comments for us on parking in this area? Okay. No, Councillor, if you have any um, comments uh, or if anyone else on the commission has any comments for us. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, it is going to be an inconvenience to everybody if we do something. And if people are willing to wait, um, um, I can also remind Smith that when the students come back in the in February or January, whenever they come back, and then again, you know, just to re remind them that about the restrictions and the parking regulations and um, just so we start off on the right foot next year and after this, the break, that's it, it really seems to be working, you know, once I think a few of the students get tickets, work gets out really quickly and especially if somebody gets towed, which we hate to do, but um, word gets around that, you know, they better abide by the rules. So um, I thank everybody that came today too to speak up and thanks for your patience to try to work through this situation. Thank you, Counselor. Yeah, and that would just be one comment that I have. You make parking restrictions on one street. We just have to be mindful that that can certainly push traffic to a different street that may not have those regulations or may have different regulations. Um, so just something to be mindful of. Any comments? Nancy, go ahead. Um, a couple of things. Um, we have seen a significant, significant in increase in the number of um, monthly parking permits for the parking lots, um, mostly from Smith College students. So there has been a significant increase there. Um, and we're also seeing um, good results from when a 72-hour notice is placed on these vehicles, 
telling them that they have 72 hours to move the vehicle or it will be towed. We're seeing very good results from that. Um, we have only had to tow two vehicles as a result of this. Um, all of the rest of them did in fact move within that time period. So uh, and we're seeing a good um, communication back and forth with Smith College uh, Public Safety and getting the word out. So I, I think that this has been a, um, a good effort, a, a good group effort, um, and I'm seeing some um, positive results from it. Yes, there is um, a, an increase in the amount of people that are parking on the streets. As we've all um, understood, these are city streets, so they are open to everyone parking there, parking legally, and we are trying to be um, very mindful of that, um, and as well as other streets that, that surround that area. Of course, we are never going to single anyone out or anyone's vehicle out um, for any kind of uh, special attention, or I hate to use the word targeting of a vehicle. Um, and I don't think that anybody wants us to do that, but I want to make it clear that it, that, it, that is not something that we would ever do. Thanks, Nancy. Any other comments in this area? Okay, hearing none. Thanks everyone for your input on that. Um, next up is a discussion of a traffic calming request for Mountain Street. Um, and this is actually uh, sort of the same neighborhood as the next item, which is North Maple Street near Arcadum Field. So we thought it best to, um, to take them uh, together at the same meeting. So that's um, what we've done. So this is a discussion of a traffic calming request for Mountain Street. And uh, the resident concerns are um, speeding. And on the screen in front of you, you can see um, the data just kind of in summary form that was part of the agenda. Um, so we like to just put that information out to the neighborhood. Chief, can you just walk us through the data that your department collected, please? Sure, thanks, Donna. Um, there was two different requests, um, 820 of 22 and 95 of 22. There was a five-year collection analysis. Um, there was six collisions between 2017 and 2021. Um, you can see on the chart there, one, one in each year, and there was two uh, crashes in 2019. As far as uh, speed and volume data, on May uh, 8th through the 19th, 2023, covert speed data was collected in the area of Mountain Street at Safety Village. Uh, during that time, the speeds of 4,947 vehicles were measured. This is a posted 30 mile an hour zone. Uh, the average speed was 30 and the 85th percentile speed was 34.7 miles per hour. Okay, thanks Chief. Um, just a couple of engineering comments. Um, the road is 1,620 feet long and it is 30 feet wide. There are no sidewalks um, and there is an existing speed regulation, uh, as the chief noted, of 30 miles an hour. And that was implemented in 1986. Um, so wondering if there is anyone here um, from Mountain Street that would like to speak with us. Beth, I see your actual hand up. So we're going to... Um, unmute you here. Hold on just a second. Let's see if we can get you unmuted. Go ahead. Um, so, I, oh, okay. Go ahead. Was someone else talking? Yeah, no, go ahead, Beth. Okay. So first of all, I just want to thank you for addressing this issue in this forum. And I do want to thank you for paving the roads around here about three years ago. Um, so that was really helpful in, in the road safety and also means that people can go a little faster because there's not as many puddles. Um, so thank you very much. So I live um, on North Farms Road. I'm the first house on North Farms Road, right where Maple and Mountain meet. Um, and we've lived there uh, for nine years and I have three kids. They're 13, 10 and six. Um, and as the report says, it's a super pedestrian heavy area, um, both because a lot of people cut through to the cemetery to walk their dogs. Um, a lot of kids from JFK are using that to cross between Arkenum Field and the cemetery to cut through to JFK. Um, and 
kids are just hanging out there um, because their siblings are playing baseball or playing basketball. Um, it's just a busy area. Um, my biggest issue though with the area because we're the first house on North Farms Road is that there's not actually a yield sign or a stop sign coming off of Mountain Road onto North Farms. So if you're making that turn, what drivers tend to do is they look to the left to see if there's any oncoming cars off of Maple and then they just gun it. Um, and this has created both a couple near misses for me pulling out of my driveway where a car isn't looking right at all. And so they don't see that I'm there. We also had a driver who hit a deer in front of our house and the deer died on my yard and they didn't stop because drivers are just not looking in both directions. Um, there also used to be a pretty bright um, street lamp at that intersection that I um, was either out for a long time or hasn't been replaced. And there's no um, painted markings on Mountain Street for perhaps a bike lane or um, some sort of pedestrian walkway or even to separate the road between different traffic. Um, so I just, I think that I appreciate the commissioner, the police commissioner's report on, um, on tr crashes. And I know those numbers are, are really low and there's a lot to look at, but I just think that from a pedestrian slash safety perspective, there's just a lot of like near misses. Um, and there's been some shenanigans at Safety Village sometimes. And so I think the area could just be a little bit more pedestrian friendly, um, considering how many kids are accessing that area um, and are learning how to be independent at that park um, and therefore not always. Um, yeah, so I think that's really what I wanted to talk about was one, I think like if there is even any way to like create some sort of crosswalk going into the cemetery because so many people are are doing that cut through. Um, and then also just some kind of markings for cars. I would just really love people to to look right uh, and not just left when they're making that turn. Um, Cause I think it's, um, it's just, yeah, it's dangerous. So um, I'm happy to I answer do. any questions, but thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you for your comments, very helpful. Okay, next is iPhone. Uh, so we will unmute you and if you could just tell us your name, that would be great. Thanks. Uh, apologies, um, just on my cell phone. Um, my name is Molly Hatch, and I have been a resident of Cloverdale Street in the Cloverdale development for 12 years. And um, we have a 15-year-old daughter who's gone through, you know, being at the middle school and using Safety Village to learn how to bicycle and recreate. And because we live so close, we're often in and out. We walk our dogs every evening and every morning, often around the time that there's a lot of traffic. And um, I reiterate everything that my neighbor just said. And I would like to add to it that um, Mountain Street in particular, where Mountain and Carolyn intersect, you have a few things going on and, and you have the sort of just a little further down, you have an intersection at Bridge Street. Uh, or Bridge Road. And so we, one thing that happens often as um, kids are coming out of Carolyn Street out of a very sleepy neighborhood, which also has no, um, there's like two streets in and out of the neighborhood. So it's a very low through traffic neighborhood with zero sidewalks. The kids are very comfortable being on the street in sort of a casual way. And they often enter into that intersection at Mountain Ave um, and Carolyn with with it's i've seen so many near misses with kids almost getting hit by cars coming way too fast up to that intersection at bridge road and i've also had the experience myself where i've come to that intersection in a car and look to my right to see what's coming up mountain um, from north farms and i'm turning left to go intersect with bridge road and all of a sudden i'll have a car right on behind me and it's really incredible like how fast people come up so i mean while the I was surprised to see that the speed averages were as low as they were because I often feel like there are people that are making really intense speeds happen in that long straight away just on that little um, street of uh, just the distance of Mountain Street. The other thing that I've seen on a regular basis is cars passing each other on Mountain Street during high traffic times which I find really challenging as well, because you also have little kids, you know, going to school on a bike or a scooter crossing, and there are no crosswalks anywhere on mountain. So even if a kid were trying to go to Safety Village to meet a friend, there is no way for them to engage a crosswalk to cross over. So 
many, many times my husband and I have had conversations with neighbors and other folks in the neighborhood about ways that that would be mitigated. And I've asked that we consider as a city putting in some kind of table traffic, like table to slow uh, or speed bump to slow folks down around the safety village area. In addition to um, there not being any sort of bike lane markings or, or even traffic markings for parking during like baseball games or sporting events, which can slow traffic down a lot, which is, is actually handy. There is nowhere delineated to park along that street. So sometimes you get people parking in really strange ways opposite each other on the road and it's hard to navigate. And you also have this really challenging thing where if people are parking along the park side and there's a ball that comes across the fence or through um, where kids are playing in the playground, they can't see and they run between a car into the street. <laughs> and it's like all the classic things that you would want not to have happen, especially at a place called Safety Village. Um, and so I feel like there's there's just a lot. I've just seen it so many times in the 12 years that we've been there. And thankfully, we've avoided accidents. But I feel like I've just seen so many near misses that I cannot believe that something more catastrophic is not Sorry to interrupt, past. but the, the limit is three minutes and I, we did sure. go a little bit longer, but thanks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. These are uh, extremely helpful comments for us and um, very much appreciated. So thank you. Anyone else um, from the neighborhood have any comments for us um, I, on in this area? I just have uh, a couple of comments um, regarding crosswalks. We certainly recognize uh, the pedestrian traffic in the area. Um, we're not able to install crosswalks unless we're connecting curb ramp to curb ramp um, and, and a curb ramp uh, or a sidewalk is required for a curb ramp. So we wouldn't be able to just sort of superimpose um, a crosswalk in an area that has no sidewalk. So that is a challenge for Mountain Street. Um, very helpful comments for us about lack of traffic control at the intersection um, and, and lack of uh, pavement markings, um, which is certainly something um, that we can look at. I see that Councillor Maori is here. I'm not sure if you have any um, comments for us, Councillor, not to put you on the spot, but I just did. Um, so I'll uh, uh, I'll unmute you and uh, go ahead. Welcome. Let's see. There it, there it goes. Yeah, no, just to say this has been really illuminating for me to hear really specifically what's happening because the, the I've heard from residents consistently since I've been the Ward 7 uh, counselor about various issues. But I think the way you described it, I'm really grateful to really kind of unpack what's happening there because um, it has been a consistent issue. Um, I've, you know, balls rolling into the, someone called me and a danger, you know, because a, a ball rolled into the road once and it was a very dicey situation. So I think we've had some good luck, but I would, I, I would, I don't want to rely on luck and I'm hoping that we can do something to address uh, my, the, these very reasonable concerns of my constituents. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Any comments from any members of the commission on this area? Just a comment from me or oh, Councillor Jarica, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'm curious what treatments you might consider as far as, you know, a narrowing or a parent narrowing or, you know, putting a de defining parking, because I, I see parkings allowed on one side, defining that parking and then having narrower lanes defined uh, um, for the rest of the road. I'm, I'm just curious what, what are the possibilities that are within the, the legal framework? Well, what, what I was actually just um, going to mention was um, that, that, you know, we, we received a couple of requests for uh, speed home, speed table installation, um, which is uh, a very sensitive issue. Um, you know, I think for a lot of folks um, request speed tables or speed humps, um, but they do create noise um, when traffic hits them, um, especially trucks and trailers. So that's something to be mindful of. And when we place them, we have to be very careful how we place them for drainage. We have to be careful where we place them in relation to driveways. And we also have to be mindful of where we place them in relation to houses because, it, you know, the house where the speed bump is closest to is going to hear in the noise. Um, so that's just one 
kind of um, disclaimer that I always like to make when people request speed humps and speed tables is is that you know they're they definitely work and they reduce travel speeds um but but there are kind of some uh less than ideal um consequences to that installation so to answer your question counselor i think we want to look at this area we also want to look at the north maple area this um feels a little bit like the Florence Fields area, um, where when we think about how we're going to control traffic speed, we need to look at both abutting roadways. Um, one of the things that I would recommend looking at in this area, budget uh, uh, permitting, is um, some sort of intersection control at the intersection um, uh, of Mountain Street, um, as well as a potential one way. Um, and, and I think that that's something that could be looked at, but we would have to look at how that pushes traffic um, into either the neighborhoods or to the main intersection with the signal. Um, but, you know, where it's sort of a triangle and it is often used as a cut through, um, that would be something that I would want to take a very hard look at. You know, if we could restrict traffic moving in one direction or the other, um, it, whatever make whichever way makes most sense from a safety standpoint. Um, I, I think that would cut down on a lot of this sort of fly through, um, you know, cut through speeding um, and and control the environment a little bit better. Carolyn, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Um, I, yeah, thanks, Donna. I was just thinking that, um, you know, maybe something else that could be evaluated is more along what you're talking about, intersection control and maybe um, curb extensions or narrowing at the mouth at either end of where Mountain Street comes in so that you can't make that fast sort of Y um, turn in either direction, but you really actually are forced to stop and make a turn um, in either direction. Yeah, agreed. It's a little too wide open there. So I think people are moving very quickly off of bridge and then they're moving very quickly onto North Farms because everything's just so wide open. One of the things that we would um, want to be uh, mindful of there is um, drainage impact. So anytime um, you put in any sort of curb extensions that are actual um, you know, physical modifications to the roadway, we do have to be careful of where water's flowing, um, especially if there's driveways nearby. So I know about your driveway is um, close to that intersection. So we'd want to make sure whatever we're doing, we're not steering the water into a place where we don't want it to go. One of the things we could think about doing is painting the ground and putting in like a plastic delineator post and just sort of, you know, plowing around that and forcing people around that. Um, the difficulty with those, and we've seen this at Federal and South Main Street, um, is that that those do have a life expectancy and they sort of get run over and destroyed and then it's difficult to replace them. Um, those particular ones are actually on back order um, and um, that's why they haven't been replaced. Um, so, you know, that just becomes sort of a maintenance item and when people run them over or snowplow hits them or something like that. So those are all the different things that we can consider. You know, there's pluses and minuses to all of those things. Go ahead, Devin. Um, I have seen research that said just painting makes a difference. And since these are local users, I think it would make a point, a very inexpensive point, just to start there and paint in those throats rather than put in infrastructure for them. Yeah, and, and roadway paint is a very, very inexpensive way to try to move vehicles around. I mean, the the one thing I will add is that it definitely, um, it obviously changes the look of the roadway. Um, you know, we've striped some roadways in the past and the residents think, you know, oh my goodness, this is not what we wanted our road to look like. Um, so it can definitely sort of change that visual and control driver behavior. Um, it, it doesn't get you the speed reduction that, you know, an actual physical thing in the road would like a speed hump or, or a curb extension, but it can absolutely make an impact. So very cost effective sort of, you know, initial step that, that we could entertain. Any other comments for us? Councillor Jarrett, go ahead. Yeah, thanks for enumerating all of those um, possibilities. Uh, I, I agree that the intersection changes sound good. Um, 
but one thing you know when when walking on this road or traveling on this road it's it's a it's wider than than some streets and it's it's a you can it's just a straight away i mean it it does curve but you can see quite a bit of distance and and is there anything that we could do to narrow it in sections um <clears throat> and you know do a bump out and and plant trees uh things that would <clears throat> or create some sort of chicane effect where you know, you have to go from one side to the other um <clears throat> in, in the middle uh as as one option to to try to decrease the speeds uh as as you're in the in the middle not just at the intersections And I think we often try to do that with parking. I don't know if either of the residents who have spoken to us have a comment about parking and if there's enough cars that park there on a regular basis where we could sort of contemplate trying to move the parking around to create that sort of um, effect that you're talking about. Um, because if we were to do it with an actual physical thing, like we're going to plant trees here, we'd have to do a utility assessment. I mean, a lot of times the utilities are are sort of right on the edge of the road. So now you're like constructing, you know, hardscape on top of that, which is not ideal. Um, I, iPhone um, hand is up here. So I'm just going to unmute you. I'm sorry. I don't recall your yep. name. It's okay, Molly Hatch. Um, you, Molly. I Thank would just you. say that I do think you could narrow. I like the idea of narrowing the road. Um, in sections. Like I think if you had just bump outs that sort of broke up the parking in different ways along that road, it could help a lot. I still also think it's worth considering a speed table. And I would just say because there's a cemetery across directly from Safety Village, and that's a non-residential plot of land that will never be developed because it's owned by a Ru Russian Orthodox cemetery. So I would take a look, another look at what's there before you take that totally off of the table. Yeah, thank you for, for the comment. Appreciate it. Yeah, and I, I think that, I, again, it, you know, a narrowing of the roadway is absolutely possible where there are not utility conflicts. You know, it's just an often, um, you know, we've got like a drain line that runs right up the curb, you know, the entire length of the street. And then on the other side of the street is like the water main, you know, and, and that's what makes things difficult for us. And so you're sort of the road layout is what it is, otherwise you're getting into a utility relocation, which is um, expensive. Any other comments for us on this section of road? Good conversation, excellent uh, information from the two residents. Um, I so really appreciate your, your comments are very, very helpful to us. Any other comments? Okay, hearing none, so just going to kind of hop across the park here, and this is a discussion of a traffic calming request for North Maple Street. Um, so, uh, Chief, if you wouldn't mind just kind of walking us through the data that you collected here, that would be very helpful. Sure, thanks, Donna. Um, this one was for North Maple Street near Arcanum Field. There was two requests, uh, one being September 5th, 2022, and uh, 321 of 24. There was a five year collection. Uh, collision analysis was conducted uh, in September of 2022. The data was reviewed in the area of 212 to 298 North Maple Street. Um, during this time, there was zero collisions reported. The speed and volume data from May 18th through the fifth May 8th through the 15th, 2023. Uh, covert speed data was collected in the area of 280 North Maple Street. Uh, 7,165 vehicles were measured. The average speed was 30 miles an hour. The 85th percentile was 34.7, and it's a posted 30 mile an hour zone. Okay, and thank you, Chief. And just a couple of engineering comments. North Maple Street between Bridge Road and Mountain Street is approximately 1,400 feet long and 25 feet wide, so a little bit narrower than uh, Mountain. There are sidewalks on the east side from Bridge Road to the north parking lot of Arcanum, and there is an existing speed regulation uh, also implemented in 1986 of 30 miles an hour. 
Uh, is there anyone here from that street uh, who would like to talk to us about their experience there? Welcome to raise your hand. Okay, Emily. Go ahead, Emily. Sorry, took me a second to find that mute. Um, hi, so I my name is Emily. I live right on Bridge Road across from Arkenham Field. Um, and I frequently, I'm one of the people who submitted um, a request because I frequently cross Bridge Road at the intersection with North Maple. Um, I have three children, ages six, four, and one. Um, so I, when I'm crossing, I typically have between one and three children with me. Often one is on a bike. Sometimes I have a wagon or um, a stroller. So trying to shepherd children across a busy road and it's tricky. Um, and the thing that makes it extra tricky is the cars turning right, the northbound North Maple cars turning right onto Bridge Road um, frequently turn into the um, crosswalk between the crossing Bridge Road on the east side of the intersection where I'm trying to cross while I'm crossing it. Um, this is an intersection that has a period in the cycle where all the cars should be stopped and all pedestrians should be safe to cross. But there's no, um, unlike the other two intersections like that in Florence at Chestnut and at North Maple and Main Street, there is not any signs about not turning right during um, that period. And the northbound cars on North Maple, um, they, they can't see very well because the um, house on the southwest corner of North Maple has very tall white fence. Um, so they have to get really far forward and they're looking left as they're trying to turn right um, and they're only looking for cars. So they, I, I've experienced this myself as a driver. It's not a very safe right turn to make um, during the period in the cycle where it's red. Um, anyway, so for that issue specifically, it feels like just a no turn on red um, sign would be really helpful. Uh, thank you, Emily. Very uh, helpful comment for us. Appreciate it. Any other comments for us on this area? Any other comments um, from anyone on the commission? I'll, I'll just add that, again, this um, feels a lot like uh, Florence Fields. Um, so we had a look at Spring Street and we also had a look at Meadow Street um, and then just sort of implement controls um, kind of ringing Florence Fields. So this um, feels like a very similar situation here. We, we would want to um, look at this entire area um, and not necessarily piecemeal something. Um, so I, I think very helpful conversation and uh, very appreciative to the residents who came today for your comments um, because it's just helpful um, to us to hear about the experience of uh, people who actually live in the area and use the road every day. So um, very much appreciate your time on that. Um, Emily, I think your hand is up again, or maybe still, I'm not sure which. Uh, we'll unmute you real quick here though. Yes, up again, sorry. I just wanna add one additional comment. I read the other person who had submitted a comment about kind of farther north on North Farms and just similar to the issue going on on Mountain Street. Um, because you have a sidewalk that takes you part way up, but not all the way up. If you're trying to get to um, the Spring Grove Cemetery, you kind of, you hit this dead end in the sidewalk. And when you're using something with wheels, like a stroller, you get forced onto North Maple, like right in the traffic. And it's just, it's a tricky place to negotiate if you're trying to walk um, from the Arkham Field area to um, the Spring Grove Cemetery, which is a you know, otherwise a great walk, um, but that that one part can be really tricky, especially in winter when you can't kind of force your way up the curve and onto the grass um, to continue till you're parallel with the um, the drive into to Spring Grove Cemetery. Anyway, yeah. I'm very yeah, excited about that new new ish sidewalk on the um, west side of Arkham Field, but I wish it had gone a little farther, and I wish there was more more sidewalks in that that general area and work curb cuts because it's it's just a very hard area to navigate when you're pushing a stroller. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that follow-up comment. Anyone on the commission have uh, anything for us on this area? Councillor, go ahead, Councillor Jarrett. Thank you. 
Um, I just wanted to note the the speed, the, though the average speed is 30 miles an hour, there's an 85th percentile speed of 34.7. What that means is in one out of seven vehicles are traveling faster than 34.7. Um, <clears throat> so that's, it, it's my reading of that would be that there's there's quite a spread of, of speed differences um, <clears throat> and, and a significant speeding uh, for one out of seven more than one out of seven vehicles. Um, and my question, I was curious what the lane width is uh, for this road. It, I know the, the total width is, you said, was it 22 feet or 24? It's, uh, hold on a sec, sorry, I'm having trouble with my mute button. Um, it's 25 feet is the overall width. Um, I suspect that there are 11 foot travel lanes there. Um, mathematically, that would work. Um, so there are likely 11 foot travel lanes um, just to accommodate truck traffic sort of moving up and down um, through that area. Yeah, so I would suggest as one thing to look at is to uh, restripe those at 10 feet. Of course, there's still the shoulder area, so any trucks or larger vehicles, you know, are still able to travel through that area. But, but um, you know, Mass, Mass DOT with its Safe Streets Initiative has shown the that <clears throat> painting at the the lower, the slightly narrower lanes uh, results in a in a speed reduction. Yeah, agreed. And and I think um, a, a lot of the, like we were discussing with Mountain Street, you can sometimes control traffic um, well uh, with paint. Um, the one uh, difficulty around that is having to grind out the existing um, thermoplastic linings that are there. And that is a um, pretty significant level of effort um, and oftentimes is is actually not effective. Um, but it's certainly, um, it, it, you know, in blacking them out with paint, um, it just kind of peels back up again. So, um, and, and exposes the line. So, um, so it's certainly something that we can entertain and, and your point is well taken. Any other comments on this area? Um, so for the residents who came, um, we take all of this information and um, we'll take a hard look at this area and um, we will be in touch with you um, and bring whatever changes we think are warranted back to this commission for further conversation um, before anything is done. Um, if we do think that uh, speed tables or speed humps are a viable uh, solution to this, um, we would notify um, the folks in the neighborhood and give you an opportunity to um, comment uh, on that proposal um, before we did anything. So um, that's just, uh, there will be follow-up on this. Uh, please bear with us as we've got a significant backlog of streets. Um, so there it, there will be uh, some time that elapses, but we will communicate with you when, when we have something. Okay. So hearing no further comments, um, we will move on to our last agenda item, which is an update on the bike path rehabilitation project between State Street and Bridge Road. Um, so this detour map is from our website. Um, we have opened the bids for the bike path resurfacing that I've been talking about for the last several months. Um, and we have received a favorable bid price of just under $1.5 million. So for $1.5 million, we will be uh, trimming the tree canopy in order to get the reclaim equipment uh, onto the path because everything's sort of grown in. Um, we will be doing um, a full reclaim of the path. So that's, um, you know, removing all the existing um, blacktop and reconstructing the base and then repaving um, in a couple of different layers. Um, also doing some shoulder work, a little bit of drainage and structure work. Um, so it's a fairly big level of effort and we are trying to push very hard to get it done before the asphalt plants close. So the asphalt plants typically close either the first or second week in December um, providing that the weather is favorable. So that's kind of a big um, if. Um, but we are hoping to push very hard to get this done this season um, so as not to be um, sort of disrupting um, the heavy spring-summer season. Um, 
this, uh, the price of this project is significant, and we are grateful to Mayor Shiara for her funding and, and for the city council's approval of the funding um, to implement this project. And, um, you know, the detour on this on your screen is um, going to be um, basically on Route 9. Um, and it is going to be uh, a short duration, meaning it's not going to be months and months long um, in that, you know, we have a very tight window to get the project done. We have a pre-construction meeting uh, this week with the contractor, and we will have more information about uh, how viable it is to push this. What we don't want to do is end up with a scenario where we've trimmed the trees and stripped the asphalt off and then we lose the weather and we can't get it paved and we're dirt over the winter. So that would not be uh, a good outcome. So we want to make sure that we're making good decisions around this and minimally that we can get a base layer down, that we can plow and we can do some sort of de-icing on over the winter season. Um, so it, this is going to be a very fast developing project. When we get a schedule, it's going to be very quick. Um, if the contractor is able to mobilize, they have to bring a lot of equipment into the city and it's going to happen very, very quickly. So I have been in touch with uh, friends of Northampton Trails. We're actually having signs um, with this map and a QR code printed up. And Friends of Northampton Trails has been kind enough to suggest that they will install them uh, liberally, sort of um, all up and down the trail. We just ask for everyone's cooperation um, to just stay out of the contractor's way so we can get this done and we can get them out of there before the snow flies. So that's um, kind of the executive summary of where we are with this project. We will communicate out as much as we possibly can. Um, you know, it's October 15th. Everything needs to really go perfectly for us to pull this off um, this season. But I want to push hard to do it so that we're not sort of lost in the chaos of next construction season. Um, it, it, this feels like a good time of year to do it um, when the use on the path might be a little bit lower than it would be when the weather is very, very warm. Um, and, you know, it's um, a, a little less, um, it, you know, tempting to be out on the path um, when it's cooler. So um, I, I think everyone's sort of interested in a date and interested in information. And I assure you that I will get that out as, as quickly as I possibly can. Um, so I don't know if anyone has any comments um, for me on this, any comments from the public or other members of the commission um, on anything that I've just said. Councillor Jarrett, go ahead. Uh, the extent of the project. So does it, does this go to King Street or does it go to State Street? Uh, it goes all the way to King Street. Okay. So what will the detour be from King Street? Will people be advised to go on Church Street? I think there's a there's a one-way entry on Church Street, but, the, I, but it's not one I, way after that. It, yes. What I want to try to do with that section out to King Street is I want to try to work with the contractor to actually not close that unless it absolutely has to be closed um because that's actually a very that that's probably one of the most disruptive portions of the trail for probably the highest number of users just sort of based on feedback that i have gotten so what i would like to try to do is work with the contractor to understand exactly what they're going to need for a closure there um if they need one at all, or if they can sort of do it in half sections, or if they can do it at an unusual hour um, that may impact the least amount of people. So that's part of the conversation um, that we will be having with the contractor this week. And um, the will there be any installation of uh, wooden fences over some of the areas that, you know, uh, currently, if you go off, if you went off the path, you'd go a very long way down say by Straw Avenue and DPW Yard, that, that area? Yeah, so we looked very carefully at that. One of the things with the fences is that it becomes a maintenance item for us and actually inhibits um, vegetation control and you know parts of the path that are terribly overgrown are actually a direct result of us not being able to get our mower in. Um, 
because there is a, a fence in the way um, and because there is, um, you know, it's all handwork like that has to be done with a weed whacker or something. So what we want to try to do is actually plant trees or vegetation um, on those hillsides um, or do something that's not a fence um, that's not going to turn into a maintenance problem for us. Um, because every fence we've got along the bike path is turning into a maintenance problem for us. So that has been our strategy uh, around this project. We're trying to look, you know, towards 10 years from now. Right. Thanks. And finally, um, the stretch between Straw Avenue and Chestnut has a number of drainage issues. And how will those be addressed? Yeah, that's going to be, uh, that was part of what took this project so long to get out to bid is we want to make sure um, it, it, it's actually um, very flat sort of by definition in through here. Um, and, and those users of the path know that after heavy rains, we get sort of silt all over the path and I have to send a street sweeper through. And so I, there is drainage work associated with this and um, some structure adjustments that are going to need to happen. Um, and that's also going to delay things, um, sort of make the duration of the project last a little bit longer because we have to get subcontractors in here um, to address those drainage concerns. And they're actually in several places, not just that stretch. Um, so, I, you know, that's all part of this contract. And minimally, we'd like to see that drainage work done and then a base layer on top of it uh, this construction season. So that, that would be our strategy. Thank you. And the other thing I should mention is we will have temporary fencing up, but it, you know it's not going to be possible for us to seal off every entrance and exit of this path. You know we had a lot of difficulty um, doing the drainage work at Adair Place, and and um, I've talked about folks sort of destroying our barricades, and you know it cost us between twenty and twenty five thousand dollars extra just in security costs and fencing costs because people actually destroyed our contractors fencing um, and we had to sort of upgrade the fencing. Um, we just really need everyone's cooperation um, to not drive costs up on this project. It's, it's um, you know, we're sort of at the high end of what affordable is here. We wanna do a good job on this um, and get it done for all users. And we just need everyone to be patient with us um, for a few weeks while, while things are disrupted. So just, Whatever networks all of you have, we just ask for you to get the word out and really stress the need to just cooperate and, and sort of stay off the path, let our contractor do their work and we can reopen and it's going to be fantastic, you know, first time paved in, in um, decades. So um, just ask for everyone's support on this initiative. Any other comments or questions on this so i will have as soon as i have a schedule to report i will uh, broadcast that wisely widely um i know councilor jared has um offered his uh, network and and uh friends of northampton trails on our website um the mayor will likely put out a press release as well so um there'll be a lot of communication around this as soon as i have um information to share Any other comments for us on this? Okay, hearing none, that concludes the matters before the commission. Um, is there any new business? Okay, and hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn, please? Uh, I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Okay, thank you, Jamie and Councillor Clemmer. Was that you yeah. with the second? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, Councillor Clemmer with the second. Is there any discussion? Okay, Beth, please call the roll. Donna. Yes. John. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Alex. Yes. Deb Clemmer. Yes. Debin? Yes. Diana? Yes. Jamie? Yes. It's unanimous with nine. Okay, thanks everyone. We'll see you next month. Take care.